Hey guys, welcome to Mendit Live Talk. We are so excited that you're here with us today. Yeah. And I tell you what, David, what a great message this yeah. week. In a new series, I love oh, yeah. this series. You see, with everything that we're uh, going through in the world, uh, we, we tend to all be looking for this new normal. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. in the last few months, we've pretty much had like everything that we knew and loved and was comfortable with, it was all stripped away. And mm. so now we're looking for this new normal. But mm. what if we stop looking for a new normal okay. and look for a better normal? Like that. How is God trying like to that. take everything that we're experiencing yeah. in life right now and shape us and mold us into something new for his glory and for his kingdom come? Yeah, yeah, man. I tell you what, I mean, it, it, it's so cool, you know, to be able to break down a story like Joseph mm. from Genesis, yep. you know, and I love how, how we were able to learn so much to take from it because Joseph at a young age, he was, he was sold into slavery by his own brothers. Right. Um, and then he ends up in Egypt. He moves his way up in the government in Egypt. And then he's falsely accused by Potiphar's wife that he did something inappropriate. Right. And then he's thrown into prison. And while he's in prison, you know, he, he feels alone. He feels forgotten about. Um, I, I can't imagine somebody who has such favor from God. Mm -hmm. And then he's thrown in prison. I mean, if it was me, I, I probably would have been like, you know what, man, I don't know, God. This is too much. Yeah. But Joseph pressed on. Mm. Joseph continued to seek God even in the midst of those adversities and his yeah. challenges. And that that's, you know, his story is both heart-wrenching. But it's also really inspiring as well. Yeah, and I think what's so inspiring about his story is the fact that it's relatable. Yeah. And I get it, like you're reading the story mm, of Joseph yeah. and you're like, how in the world is this relatable? Like, right. I've never been sold into slavery uh, from my sisters. Well, they probably wanted to uh, sell you at times, um, though. I've never been in prison, uh, but you know what? I, I have been falsely accused. Mm. I have been talked against. I, I've faced trials and I've... I've face tribulation in different ways and uh, temptation in different ways. And I, I've struggled. Um, but this story is a great reminder of what it means to be resilient, mm. to always push through even in the midst of adversity. And so yeah. there's a few points I think uh, Pastor Don talked about in the sermon this past week uh, that I think we should reflect on today. And the first one is God has a plan and a purpose mm. for your life. Yeah. And Chris, yes. man, I'm telling you like, this is something mm. I have personally struggled with it's it's been something that's been really hard for me to truly comprehend Wait, in my life you're a pastor yeah you're not supposed to struggle right right <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's what people think yeah you know? so people tend to put pastors on this pedestal that mm -hmm. we're supposed to have it all together our right. life's supposed to be perfect we we know the truth and we we apply it to our lives and so that means we don't struggle right yeah. well on the contrary like we probably tend to struggle the most because who's satan gonna attack Boom. Yeah. The front line warriors of God. It's like he's got a shotgun up on me. Every yeah. Day, man. Like, bang. And I'll tell you what, like this is, God has a plan and purpose for your life. That's something I've struggled with because there are many things that I face that I look to God and I'm just like, God, what the heck? Yeah. Like I follow you. What? I'm faithful. Like, why are you allowing this? And like yeah. this past year, I've been very open about struggles in my life when it comes to mental health and anxiety mm. and depression and darkness. Like, and it was hard for me and i it was very hard because i would look to god and i would say how could you possibly use this for you? my good You're right right in your glory right in these moments i felt more broken than ever before and here at ringle we we believe in this statement broken lives mended by christ, by christ. and yeah. i saw myself more than broken yeah so how how god how can you use this mm. How can you use this? And this is where I love the verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm. And I think it's good for my life personally. Mm -hmm. It's good for your life. And yeah. I know, yeah, you're messed up. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> no, exactly right. uh, it's good for our lives. It's good for your life. It's, right. it's great for our church because our church has faced some hard times. Yeah, right. uh, so Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the mm. plans I have for you, says it. the Lord, declares the Lord. Mm. They are plans for good and not disaster mm. to give you a future and a hope. Yeah, man. I absolutely love that, yeah. man, because, you know, some translations it does say that declares the Lord, that mm -hmm. he has plans for us. He's declaring it over us. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, how do we know what that plan is? Right. How do we know? And, and what I found out for myself here is that he reveals his plan to us mm -hmm. right 
there in his word. Yeah. Right in the scriptures, he reveals it. It unfolds. We just need to take the time to get alone with him Mm -hmm. and actually dive into the scriptures. You know, so many times we want to, you know, water ski the scriptures. How many pages can we get done in a day? But God's calling us to open the Bible and scuba dive, man. Yeah. Go deep. You know, what a lot of us need to stop doing is we need to stop highlighting the Bible with a Sharpie. Mm. Did you get that? Like, stop highlighting the Bible with a Sharpie, oh. meaning you get to pick and choose. You get to mark out what you don't want to apply to your life. We need to apply every bit of it right. to our lives. Right. And that reminds me of, of a saying I usually say. Um, I tell people, you know, hey, man, don't go and apply God's scriptures to your life. And people are like, whoa, what are you talking <laughs> about? You're a pastor, man. Why in the world would you tell me not to apply God's <laughs> scriptures to my life? Well, here's why. When we do that, when we take God's word and we apply certain scriptures to our life, we then pick and choose what we want. Uh, yep. And we leave things out and we take certain things and we mix certain things. And then we're at that point, we're, we're creating a God to suit ourselves. Yep. And when we do that, that's actually called idolatry mm-hmm. in the Bible. But I tell people to reverse that, flip that around. Don't apply scriptures to your life, but then take your life and apply it to the scriptures. Yeah. That way you can't change anything. You need to adjust to what God's word says. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, so we do that. When we do that, we apply our life to the scriptures. You know, we go before God and we humbly, we humbly get before his presence. Mm. And then we, we, we pray. And we don't just pray with a laundry list of prayers like, God, I want this, I want that, I want this, or help this person. But we go and we say, you know what, God, here I am. I'm right here. I just, I just need you to speak to me. Talk to me. And, and between that listening prayer and, and getting in his word, he reveals his plan to us. Yeah. He unfolds it right before our eyes. Yeah. And Chris, there's another key point I think we should reflect on it. It's God is preparing you for those plans and purposes. So everything that we face, everything that we go through, it was never a surprise to God. And God no. is using it right here, right now. It's true, man. And, and we have a choice when we face these setbacks. Mm-hmm. We have a choice. We could either run from God or we could run to God. Yeah. And and God gives us that that choice. He's like, you know, hey, I'm here. Are, are you going to come to me? You're going to let me help you through your adversity? Or are you going to run from me? And, you know, and, and when these setbacks happen, we can either become bitter and get angry and shake our fist at God, mm-hmm. or we can actually become better and, and let God provide basically for a word picture uh, purpose. Uh, out in the middle of the woods in the pitch dark all of a sudden god provides you with a flashlight so you can see right in front of you the next yeah. step to take you know and and we can either you know at that point uh run away from god or get closer to him and uh so uh i think about my own personal life you know with the setbacks that i've faced and you know, with my marriage my career and even church man i mean there's times in church uh i've been blindsided by things mm-hmm. and um i could have been like you know what god i'm done with this I am so done with this. And at one point I was kind of close, man. I'm just being human here. Yeah. Um, but I chose to press into God. Yeah. And that's in, so important. In every aspect. Yeah. And, and it's pressing into him. He revealed his, his plan. He revealed yeah. the next step of where I should go. Yeah. So. I love this, uh, this new saying that I've recently discovered. You know, uh, within the Christian culture, we there, it's filled with Christianese. And one of the, Jeez. one of the things is how oh, I'm, I'm just in this season right now. Yeah. The storm is raging. The wind is fierce. Uh, the waves are going crazy and I feel like I'm about to drown, but yeah. there's been this, uh, this new phrase that I just recently discovered is what if we replace those seasons with walls, mm. you know, in life, we never know when we're about to hit a wall, you know, mm. we're, we're sh- strolling along and then all suddenly it's like, we, just we like, hit so hard bam. and it feels like life is chaotic and there are so many different ways we can approach this wall. Uh, We can walk away from it and ignore it and never get further in life. True. Uh, You can try to manipulate the wall and build a ladder and try to climb over it or try to climb under it and then realize that the wall just keeps going and you never get under it. Uh, There are so many different ways that we can approach the wall. You can even just sit there and pout. Yeah, complain. um, And complain or we, we plow right through that wall. Boom. And I love this with scripture because God is constantly building us up, strengthening us and preparing us to hit that wall. And when we yeah. hit that wall, 
just like if you literally went out and just ran into a wall is it gonna hurt absolutely is there gonna be pain yeah. absolutely yeah. may some of your bones break <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah but you're gonna come through stronger, stronger than ever man. before and god is always that. going to protect so you true. and heal you and where you break He's going to take those broken pieces and he's going to mend it and it's going to be stronger and more beautiful than before. before. Yeah. So right here, right now, we need to trust the process. Wherever you mm -hmm. are, trust, the um, trust that it's going to get better. Trust that God's going to use it. And here's the thing. I'm not going to sit here and guarantee that your life is going to be perfect. Your life is going to be great. Guess what? Like we all are going to have these thorns in our sides. Yeah. Uh, that feels like you just constantly like, God, what the heck are you doing? Yeah, like, what's up, Lord? But this is also where we remember that this is not our home. Things right. are going to get better. But God's also going to use our story, not just for our good, but for the good of those around us to point them to him. So how we react to the walls in our life is it's critical. It are is. we going to stay grounded in God and hope in him and have faith in him? Are we going to be cowards? Are we going to be poor representations of Christ? Wow. And I know personally, I'm a pastor and I, I, I'm growing in this area. I'm, Me too. I, um, this is something where we believe at Wrinkled, you can't do life alone. And yeah. we are called to come together and grow together to, um, to mend together yeah. our mend brokenness. Together. Yes. Uh, so that's what Mended Life Talk is all about. Yeah. We're mending this brokenness together. And so we have something uh, formerly known as the Message Connect. So mm -hmm. with today's video, what we're doing right now, we were providing this discussion guide that has scripture, it has questions, it has uh, points that you can apply to your life, that you can evaluate your life and say, okay, where do I need to, to realign myself with God? So we wanna challenge you, take this Message Connect with, or take, take the Mended Life Top Guide and use it yeah use it during your personal yeah. time or if you have Down a group a of time. friends that you want to create a connect group with use this guide yeah. and grow together and why right. we like doing this so much is because it's one thing to just listen to the sermon during the week but when we take the mended life talk guide and we apply it throughout the week we're actually making uh, church not just a sunday morning thing right. but uh an entire week thing so that we're growing constantly yeah. every single day so we yeah. want to encourage you to choose to get better Yes. Choose not to bitter, get better. But not better. bitter, but better. Right. Uh, so take better this, normal. <laughs> take this mended life talk and apply it to your lives today. And be sure to share it with friends because yes. there are others that, that need this truth, yeah. that need to be encouraged, that, that need to exper experience life change just like you. Yeah. So with that, let's, uh, let's pray and yeah. call it a day. Uh, yeah. Dealing with Father, we just, we want to thank you because we know that whatever it is that we're facing right now, whether we're strolling along and life seems perfect or it seems like life is chaotic and falling apart. We know that you are still God, you're in control and you're gonna use this moment in our life to shape us, to mold us and to take us wherever you're going. And God, if this is a moment in life that we get to uh, experience what Jesus experienced when he faced trials and tribulations here on earth, God, may we take that on boldly and with pride that we get to be like Christ and mm -hmm. bearers of your word. Yes, but God, would you take our brokenness and would you use it for your glory? God, use it for your glory. Bring people into your presence. May people experience Christ in us every time they uh, come around us, even when we seem shattered. Would they look at us and say, there's something different about you. Would you please tell me what it is? Mm -hmm. God, use every single one of us. God, we worship you and we praise, praise you. you. And we say this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, if yes. uh, if you need help taking the next steps, uh, we, we obviously want you to take the Mended Life Talk yeah. Guide and apply this to your life. But if you need further help and you just don't know what the next steps are, please reach out to us. We would love to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us through the website, mm -hmm. uh, ringgoldchurch.com, or you can message us on um, Facebook or yeah. Instagram. We would love to talk to you and we'll reach out to you. Or with that, we want to thank you for joining us today for Mended Life Talk. And we'll right. see you next week. All right. Love you guys. See Take you guys. Care.